Thank you, Ivan. So uh, Ivan just described the Rabbis Composer, which is um, it's a standalone tool. You can use it. It has its features. But uh, I would like to talk to you about two specific libraries that we have that in use inside the Rabbis Composer, which can be used on their own if you wish to create your own Rabbis Composer. So uh, the two libraries are CWLTS, which stands for TypeScript, and CWL SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics. Uh, the TypeScript library is a data model, and the SVG library is uh, visualization. So this is the backbone of the tool and workflow editor that Eamon just described. I will go into a little bit more detail um, how they actually work and how you can use them for your own projects. Um, the reason we decided to make these two separate modules is, of course, for modularity, for our own sake. We had experiences with previous workflow editors and uh, tool editors for CWL, which code for CWL domain and GUI logic gets jumbled up. You can't do anything. So we've moved it all into two separate libraries. Um, as you can see, this is our architecture for the composer, the two libraries, front end, which is in Angular 2, and back end, which is in Electron. Um, the reason we're open sourcing these and kind of making them easy to use is for promoting CWL and other people can make their own tools for editing CWL and we can you know, adopt the standard and that's all cool. Um, so the, the data model uh, is in TypeScript, which compiles to JavaScript or can be used as TypeScript. Uh, many of you know that JavaScript is now absolutely ubiquitous. So you, you have mobile apps, you have desktop apps as the Rabbis Composer, uh, backends in Node, um, web applications. So you can pretty much use this anywhere. It transforms the CWL document into a JavaScript object that exposes methods for manipulating the object and then can be serialized back into valid CWL. Uh, some of the features uh, that even has already described are, for example, validating the document. Uh, this can be twofold. So we have schema validation. We expose JSON schemas for um, we're just first pass through through the document. And uh, contextual validation, so things like, is your expression uh, valid? Does it have maybe syntax errors? Uh, do you have duplicate IDs? And things like that. Uh, it's also used for command line generation, so give it a dummy job that would be present in runtime. Give it your tool, and it will generate a command line. And uh, this part of the library is also responsible for creating the uh, in-memory graph that the SVG library then visualizes. Besides the data model, the library also provides, like I said, JSON schema and TypeScript interfaces, which are just uh, ways to type hint CWL if you're working in JavaScript or TypeScript and need to like have uh, statically typed, um, type hinted for CWL. Uh, so moving on to the SVG, the visualization, um, basically it takes the data model um, of a workflow and it creates this visualization uh, SVG, which is not just a static SVG, although you can export it, like Ivan said. Um, instead, it has various interactions. So here are some of them. You can move nodes around. And the values of the new x and y coordinates are saved to the data model, which can then be serialized back into um, CWL. Connecting nodes. Uh, clicking on a port and dragging creates a new connection. The ports you see here in green are suggested ports. So there, for example, if this output is of type file, these are also of type file. We kind of assume they're going to work. But in CWL, you can transform what uh, the values you get. So basically, any connection is valid. These are just our suggestions. Deleting nodes, um, selecting a node and deleting it, also deletes not only the step, uh, its inputs, its connections, and its outputs. So every, all of that is cleared out of the CWL. You don't have to go back and search for IDs, remove connections. Uh, it does all of that for you. Selection of nodes uh, highlights the connections and kind of makes everything else fade away. So you can focus on a particular step, see how it flows through the workflow, what is connected to it and auto-arrange. Um, this, for example, is VC Bio without any um, 
coordinate data, so we don't know where we're supposed to put all of the, the nodes. It, like Brad, I think, said it was a messy hairball. Um, and the auto arrange uh, topologically sorts the steps and the inputs and untangles the, the hairy <laughs> mess uh, for you. So that's it for the two libraries. You can find out more uh, about the API and how to use them on our GitHub, which is github.com slash rabbix uh, slash CWLTS or CWSUG. Uh, and as some people have already mentioned, we have two official releases today, uh, version 1.0 of the Rabbix executor and beta a release of the Rabbix composer. You can find out more at this address. Yeah. And um, I think we have time for questions now. For, for our session. So if anybody has any questions for me or Yanko or Ethan. Yeah.